Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we have episode two of my new Plant Basics series. Um, I hope that you enjoyed the first episode which was on what is chlorosis. My aim with this series is to cover the structures, functions, features of plants and essentially how plants actually work so that we can all better understand plants in order to take care of them more efficiently. If you are enjoying this series, please do let me know by interacting with this video in any way, whether that be liking, subscribing, commenting, all of that good stuff so that you can basically tell me that you're enjoying the content I'm putting out. That's the best way to support me. So in episode two, we're going to cover the cellular structure of a plant leaf. And I wanted to do a whole separate video on this before I delve any deeper into other um, structures and functions basically, so that we can have a good foundational knowledge of what's going on inside a leaf. Now a leaf is important for so many different things, how we use light, water, gas exchange, and all of that good stuff. So for the purpose of this video, I'm going to cover a dicotyledon leaf. So essentially in our flowering plants, our angiosperms, we have two types of um, arrangement of cells in a leaf, okay? We have our monocotyledons or our monocots and our dicotyledons or our dicots. Now, for most of our house plants, they're going to be dicots and that's why I'm going to focus on this solely in this video. But briefly, the difference is that a monocot, le uh, that a monocot leaf is the veins are arranged in a very linear way and I'm going to give you some examples of what that might look like so that you can kind of understand. Dicot leaves then are much more complex and the veins are arranged in a more kind of a net type of way and I'll show you a diagram of that too but that's essentially what we're going to focus on now. So we're, we're looking deep into the structure of the cells of a leaf. So my approach to this video is I'm going to show you a little drawing that I'm going to make of a dicot leaf cellular structure. Now do not judge my drawing skills. I used to be very good at drawing but it's kind of one of those things for me that if you don't practice it um, you kind of forget your skills with it but I thought it would be nice for you to watch me draw this. So I'm going to draw the structure I'm going to label it and then after you've seen that I'm going to go through each feature and explain um, what its function is and what, what it basically does in the leaf. So the diagram I'm going to draw is, you know, I kind of looked at various different examples on Google Images as you do and in different papers. So um, I think the easiest way to show this is to draw a cross section of a dicot leaf. At the top you have basically the top um, side of leaf which is generally be the most visible and then at the bottom we're going to have kind of the underside of a leaf. So up at the top here we have the cuticle. Underneath that from the top down side we have the upper epidermis. At the bottom then we have the flip side of that which is the lower epidermis. And down here we also have the stoma and the two guard cells for each stoma. Now there are multiple different stomata, which is the plural of that word, stoma is single, um, along the underside, typically the underside of a leaf. In between then the upper and lower epidermis, we have the mesophyll layer. The mesophyll layer is made up of two different types. One is palisade and one is spongy. So you can see these layers up the palisade is closer to the upper epidermis, then you have the spongy mesophyll and then you have the lower epidermis. Within this spongy mesophyll layer, we also have a typical vein or vascular bundle. And within this bundle, there are two different types of structures and one is called a xylem and one is called phloem. So that's essentially the cross section of your typical dicot leaf, which is the majority of the house plants that we would have growing indoors. So now that we've seen your typical cross section and all of the different elements, they're slowly introduced into your brain. And now I'm going to go 
through each one of these and discuss what their functions are, what's the reason for their presence within the leaf structure. So up at the top, we have the cuticle. The cuticle is not present on every single leaf, but it's basically a layer on top of the epidermis of the leaf and it's a waxy layer. The function of this is to reduce water loss and therefore because of its waxy nature and holding on to water, it's very typically found in plants that are evolved for drier climates. So the waxy layer stops water loss so that it can hold on to more water because it might not know when it's gonna rain again. Then we have these two layers of epidermis. We have the upper epidermis on the top side of the leaf and we have the lower epidermis on the underside of the leaf. Most dicot leaves have their stomata on the lower epidermis or the underside of the leaf away from sunlight. So the lower epidermis has the stoma, which is the single part of that word, or the pleura, which is stomata. And as I said, these are usually in the shade. So what do stomata do? Stoma are basically these small holes or pores within the lower epidermis. And these have two guard cells at either side, which are kind of, they control the opening and closing of the stoma. The stoma basically control the gas exchange of a leaf. They allow carbon dioxide in and oxygen out. It also does have a function for water vapor as well and can let this in and out when it needs. The guard cells then are basically, so when the guard cells are full of water, they become really turgid, they become hard and basically full. They're like a full stomach of water. They cannot take in any more water. When they're turgid, the stoma open, and this is to allow water vapor to um, basically be released from the leaf. And when the guard cells are not turgid, they're the opposite of that, they kind of shrink in, and this ends up closing the stoma in, which also has the function of holding on to more water. The guard cells also contain something called chloroplasts. This is actually present throughout the leaf structure. It's in the mesophyll as well, in the palisade and spongy mesophyll. And chloroplasts are essential for carrying out photosynthesis and how plants actually use light to make food. Now, I'm not going to go into that in this video because I think it deserves its whole other video. But remember the word chloroplasts for future videos. So I was talking about guard cells and how they basically control the opening and closing of the stomata. And on top of this, stoma are generally open during the day to allow gas exchange to occur. At night, however, the stoma close, and this is essentially to stop transpiration, to hold on to more water. The mesophyll layer then is the plant tissue that's between the upper and lower epidermis. As I noted, this contains two main um, elements, which are the palisade mesophyll and the spongy mesophyll. The palisade mesophyll basically contains very tightly packed and well organized plant cells. This palisade layer also contains a lot of chloroplasts, which as I said, are very essential for carrying out photosynthesis. So most of the photosynthesis process, which is the plant's use of light to make food, occurs in this palisade, medis palisade mesophyll layer, okay? So most of photosynthesis is going on in this layer. Below that then, in the spongy mesophyll, there's much less chloroplasts and therefore much less photosynthesis happening in this part, but it is still present. As the word spongy mesophyll suggests, the plant cells in this layer are much less organized. They're kind of free roaming, they're different sizes, they're sponging around in there, and a lot of them are very irregular in shape. Because they're kind of moving around in this layer, there's also a lot of air pockets and these air pockets are connected. So below this, as we know, we have the stoma, of the stomata. These are connected to these air pockets in the spongy mesophyll layer and this aids in the gas exchange process. So within the spongy mesophyll layer, we also have the veins or vascular bundles. And as I noted, these contain xylem and phloem. The xylem part of this, 
has a kind of a hard outer layer which is made up of a woody material called lignin which you may hear again in later episodes of this series but xylem basically is used to transport water and mineral salts um, throughout the plant and this is also used in the mesophyll layer for photosynthesis obviously because it's transporting water it doesn't it's impermeable to water it doesn't lose water as water is traveling through this xylem um, layer phloem then is permeable to water and allows sucrose or sugar as well as amino acids to travel from the leaves to other areas of the plant. So this is kind of transporting um, the sugar, energy, things for keeping the plant alive. Well, so is xylem as well because it has the water, but it's, it's much more um, nutrient based. A cool top tip for you, which you may find interesting, is that um, for plants that have really thin leaves, you know those plants that lose water really easily and they dry out and they flop around and they're far less turgid. Thin leaves essentially allow much greater light absorption, but also it allows CO2 to enter the mesophyll layer much faster because it has less plant material to make its way through the stomata. And because of less um, thickness of plant cells, it also doesn't hold on to water as effectively, which is why plants with thinner leaves dry out much faster. So that is a very basic, basic overview of the cellular structure of a plant leaf. It may not all make sense right now, but I'm hoping that it will all come together <laughs> in some way. And I think it's good to start at the very basics of the cellular structure so that we can understand more complicated things later on. Please do let me know what you thought of this video. I hope that I was able to not make it too complicated but explain it in a certain way so that it can be digested by whoever's watching. If you did enjoy it, please do let me know by interacting in whatever way that you want to with this video, whether it just be a simple click of a like, a click and a bell of subscribe so that you can be notified when the next episode of this series goes live or goes live or leave a comment let me know what you thought of the video if you have any questions or things that you want to be covered in future episodes let me know this is an interactive experience i want us all to be kind of learning together i have covered this stuff in my career before but it's really also good for me to go back and remind myself of these things and to research stuff as well so i want it to be a back and forth i don't want it to just be me sitting here talking to you so with that being said i really hope that you enjoyed it and I'm really excited about this series. I'm excited to make more of these. I think the next one is going to be on photosynthesis, how plants use light, and more about those chloroplasts and how they actually work. That is it for this video, and I will see you very soon in the next one. Bye.